and I'm going to give you a quick update on what I've been up to. This is the Desert Mountain residence that I'm doing. It's a 13,000 square foot house I'm doing up in Desert Mountain. It's one of these houses that's almost like a, a city block. It's so big. I don't know if I showed this to you at the beginning. It's got a basketball court in the basement that we had to dig out. It's this huge, huge, gigantic site. And here is where it's at right now. So it's it's got these roofs that are sort of triangle shapes, but they're just roof trusses turned upside down and kind of slanted off to one side. There's not anything like really remarkable about them. They're just you take your standard roof truss and you just flip it upside down and pull the point off to one side. So they're able to make them all in a factory. They come, they're super straight, they're super lined up, and uh, got the concrete going up, steel. This is the view from the office. One of the things this project does is it tries to crop out, there's like a house where you can see part of it right here. It tries to crop out all the other houses so that when you're inside, you're not seeing your neighbors. Um, in fact, we, we moved, we first designed that the office was on one side of the house, and then we met the neighbor who was just finishing up their house, and the neighbor's neighbor said, oh yeah, she walks around naked in her house all the time. Okay. And so we moved the office so that the roof of the house was blocking out that part of the house, and then <clears throat> my client never had to see that. But like, so this is their, this is the view from the office. And when it's done, there'll be a roof piece that comes out like this and hides all the other houses. So all he'll see is the, is the, uh, um, mountains around. What's that? Um, they are spending right about six million on the house. It'll probably be worth 13 or 14 million when it's finished. So. Wait, so where does the other like five or like six or seven million dollars? I mean, where does that come from in value? That's just so houses this size that are custom okay. in this area are going for thirteen to fourteen million. Okay. So the comps. So you'll build the house for the cost of the construction, but then plus the, the the comps, the other houses in the area, whatever they're selling for, it just goes up in value, and. The, the, these clients, they had that. I did a house for them in New York. <clears throat> the same thing. I think they spent a million two on the house, and as soon as it was done, it was worth like two and a half or three million, because that's what the other ones were worth. Where is it? This is up in Desert Mountain, the very north part of Scottsdale. This is the end of Scottsdale, right here. And then this is all federal land. So they have a. They can see like a million saguaros going up the mountain, and that that will be there forever. Um, unless we get invaded by China or Russia and they destroy all of our national parks. Or someone else destroys the national parks. Could happen. Anyway, fun stuff going on. You see the, I'm doing like sort of a reverse mountain thing here with the trusses. And this is, so, you've probably noticed that I'm not super tall. My client, he's like 6'5", and his wife is 6'3". So this is me taking a photo of what they would see if they were standing in this space. <laughs> These are the lengths that we go to to serve our clients around here. So, that, that's dedicated right there, right? I'm like, I need a box that's a foot high. <laughs> Like, well, we'll stack up these two by pieces. This thing was super wobbly, too. I'm kind of glad I didn't die. All right. So, now you know I'm not just up here faking it. Actually doing, actually doing the work. Okay, let's go into Illustrator and learn how to uh, use this, the brush tool for even cooler things. You think those scattered people were cool? Just you wait.
What's that? You guys think it's cool? Yeah, look at that. We had a bunch of people come. See? Do you think it's cool or do you think it's sick? Because I know sick is like the popular term now, right? Cool? Okay. As long as cool still works. Okay. Um, I'll just show you this real quick. You have all these different sizes of files depending on what you're sending something to. They have large web pages. They even have iPhone screens. These are the number of pixels wide these things are. I don't know if... It's, they talk about this... When I was growing up, no one had any idea what pixels were and how wide they were. But I think everyone, when you're buying a new phone, you kind of check that now, right? Isn't that something that... Isn't that something most people sort of know how many pixels it is? Or is that still not common knowledge? No? No, you don't... It, it's there, right? It's, it's, <laughs> the, uh, um, I was looking at the new Samsung phones that came out that are like 8K HD screens, which means the pixels are like, you know, like you could hold them up to, to your eye and you wouldn't see the, the blend in them. And they're like, these are super cool. It'll drain your battery within like four hours. Um, I'm going to do an 8.5 by 11. Just, just make a piece of paper. I'm going to do an 8.5 by 11 uh, horizontal and uh, create that. We're just going to be kind of making brushes and just spilling them out all over the page today. So it's not something... Uh, this, is, this is fun. This is like finger painting. Okay. Um, did, was everyone able to successfully make the person? Does anyone want to run through those steps a second time? Or do you all feel good about how you did your, your person from the top view? I'm going, to, I'm going to show you trees using the same technique. So if I do that, I think you guys got the idea of sort of how you can do it. Okay. Let's make a tree. Let's make a bunch of trees. So I'm going to come up here to the rectangle tool. But I'm going to switch it to the ellipse tool, which is hiding underneath. So if you just left click on it from the rectangle tool, go to ellipse tool. Or you can hit the letter L for ellipse. And I'm going to make a circle. Remember, if you hold the shift key down, it'll make a perfect circle as you're doing it. One other trick in Illustrator, if you want something exact shape, you you select your oval tool, and then you click once. You left click once, and it'll say, how big do you want it? And then you can say, well, I want it exactly one inch by one inch, should you want to do that. That's how you do that. So you just, just don't click and drag out. Just uh, click on the page, and then you can do a one inch by one inch. Okay. Um, now we're going to go to the. Um, let's see which one are we going to use. Distort. So we're going to go up here under Effect to the Distort and Transform tool and the Roughen. I'm going to roughen them up a little bit. Okay. Brings up a little menu like this. Uh, Illustrator has all these menus. Always click Preview at the beginning, and then it'll show you while you're working on it. It'll show you what you're doing. So now I've changed my circle into a, a kind of a, a wreck, so to speak. And I can sit there and change the size of the distortion. Look, I've already sort of got a palm tree thing going on here. You can change the amount of detail so it gets hairier, so to speak, or less hairy. You're doing like a rock. If you're doing a kite, you can turn the detail down to nothing. So you kind of just, you can smooth them a little bit. And then you've got relative or absolute, which will give you more or less distortion, depending on how big you made the circle to begin with. Okay, so I'm just going to mess with it until I get something that looks sort of like a tree would look from the top. Yes? Um, so under effect... Uh, distort and transform and roughen. Okay. I got a good tree right there. Now, if you want to go, if you want to be really crazy, like it's super late at night, and then you can, um, you can roughen a roughened one. Right? Like, 
I don't know if Picasso would have had the guts to do this. Yeah, that looks that looks terrible. Hey, don't do that. Especially late at night, because you'll be like, oh no, this is what the trees are going to look like. And they'll be like, go home. Okay. Um, I've got a tree. I'm going to give it, because we're going to do some things with the color of it, I'm going to give it some color, but I'm just going to give it a gray color. Sort of a middle term gray. So I'm clicking on the back, or the fill box right here. The color picker comes up, and I'm going to pick somewhere right in the middle of the gray, which is off to this side completely. Okay, now I have a tree, and it's gray. Um, be sure your brushes palette is open. If it's not, come up to Window and down to Brushes, or click F5. Make sure your brushes palette is open here. If you don't see it, it might be hiding under the swatches or the symbols palette. And now we're going to grab our tree and drag it into the brushes palette. Just drag and drop. Drag it anywhere. It says new brush. What kind of brush do you want to make? We're going to make a scatter brush. Yeah. Everyone saw that? Illustrator has a ton of drag and drop stuff. They were the first ones that did it. And it took everyone forever. They're like, wait, what button do I push to do that? I'm like, no, you just drag it, drop it in. They're like, what's this drag and drop thing? Now everyone does drag and drop. Scatter brush. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to give mine a name, tree number one. I don't usually name my brushes. I'm a sloppy artist kind of person, but you can do it if you want to. And I'm just going to name it tree number one, and now I'm just going to click OK. And then I'll deselect my tree, and I'm going to draw a line like you guys did uh, the other day. Put myself a line in here, and I'm going to click on my tree brush. So I get a bunch of trees. Now you'll see that my line, my stroke is now the trees. I still have a fill in here. That's the gray. So I'm going to go over here to my fill and click none to turn off the fill. And now I just have a bunch of trees. We all together still? Where'd you do the fill at? So I had it selected. It was over here. This is the... Yeah, I clicked that and I clicked the little red dash for that. Okay? Now, um, you can have it selected or you cannot have it selected. It doesn't matter. It, when you change this brush, it will affect um, everything that's in that brush. So I'm going to double click on my tree brush. And move it here so I can't see it. And then this was the fun part. We change it from fixed to random. And then you start messing with it. Change the size. Change the spacing, and then scatter is the one where it really gets starts looking really. Uh, see, it's like you don't even see that curve that I put them on anymore. And then rotation is when they start looking more organic. And if you've done it right. Usually I just do one tree, or like one species of tree. I'll do like a palm tree looking thing and a fir tree looking thing, and that's it. Okay? We all good? We're all getting trees kind of scattered around different sizes. Remember you're switching your spacing from fixed to random. And then you can rotate them. Well, we'll do that again. This is how we made the people into a line. Rotate them versus path versus that. Okay. Now you have under here a colorization. And this lets you give the trees um, color. The, it lets you take that gray and turn it into a color later on. So I'll show you how to do that if I did it right. So I've got my trees planted like this. Now the last thing it says is do you want to apply it to the strokes or just leave them how they were, which means the ones that were already on the page, you want to change those? Or do you want them to go back to where they were and only change new stuff that you do? I always do apply to strokes. Okay. Now, the um, uh, 
uh, if I select it, I can change the color or I can change, uh, it might be that I have to do with an actual color. Right now I'm just changing the hue. So we'll try this again with the, with the color in a little bit. But you'll see, if I'm, what I'm doing is I'm changing the stroke color. Illustrator sees all of these trees as the stroke. And so when you change the stroke, it affects the trees. In fact, if you change the weight of the stroke, it, it, like now it thinks, oh, I'm doubling the size of the stroke. So you can also change the size of the trees by changing the, the thickness of the line. So there's a bunch of different ways you can affect it here. Yes? Okay, I'm just I'm remembering how I did it because I haven't done this for a, for a while. I'm teaching myself right in front of you. Okay, so um, you you double click on it, go back to the scatter brush options, and it's tints and shades. I took it to hue shift. It's tints and shades. So change your colorization method to tints and shades. Apply to strokes, and now whatever color you make your line, it'll make the trees that color. And I think if I were to make a second one that had the same thing on it, but give it a different line, a different color. Yeah, so now you can make, so I have, I have two lines. The same tree is on both of them, but I've changed the outline color, changed the stroke color. So you can get various different tree colors on it. Everyone's sort of following along. You switched it to tints and... <coughs> Let me show you where that was again. I double click on my scatter brush. It brings up the scatter brush options. Change the colorization method to tints and shades. And that gives you the, the option that uh, when you create um, other lines that have these same trees on them, Whatever color you make the outline, the stroke, the trees will be that color. And then, yeah, so you could you could change the size of them in either the weight of the stroke. You want gigantic ones or little itty bitty trees. You can change it in that. We all good? We all following along? We've got forests popping up all over the place. You're saving the planet in Illustrator. <laughs> okay, let me just, yeah, let me show it again. So, here's how you get your color variations. Double click on your scatter brush options. You got that? Yeah. And you switched it, the colorization to tints and shades. Okay. And now, select, select one of them. So here's my line that all these are following along change the stroke color over here. Whatever color you change that to, the trees will uh, switch to that. So if you're in, you know, maybe it's fall. We could get into Bob Ross territory here if we wanted. I just want to paint a fall scene. Love a little fall. 
a beautiful fall day. You want to go for a walk. Or I guess you could do fireworks. You got Valentine's Day coming up. You could do little hearts. Anyone, if anyone wants to do a Valentine's Day card as illustrator, I'm like, you know, not for me, like for your significant other. Just show me that you used it for that, so that I know you're like, hey, I can use this for anything. Is there a way that we can teach the like, the Yeah, yeah, illustrator. Yeah. Okay, so we've made one brush into the tree. Let's say that you want to do it with. Say you don't like the outline. Um, I'm going to go back to my original tree and just turn his outline off. So I've given him an outline of nothing. I'm just going to drag and drop him. You can make a million variants of this. And uh, I give him the same properties as the other one. Make them all random, especially the spin. And then a little bit of scatter. A little bit of spacing. A little bit of randomness. Change the colorization to tints and shades. And then put them in here. And then turn off, whoops, turn off the, uh, the fill color. <coughs> there he is. He's a little bit big, so I'm going to just shrink him down. And I will throw away my other ones. Because it looks pretty sweet when they're all, um, when they don't have the outlines. So I could put some more. Just a happy little tree. Just doing this thing there. Okay, so you can do them with outlines, you can do them without outlines. Let's say we want to do a couple different species of tree. I can always go back to my, I can draw another circle. I can go back to effect and uh, distort and transform. I can roughen it again. Click preview when you do it. Always click preview. I'm going to put some palm tree-ish looking guys in here. Don't tell landscape architects you know how to do this because they'll be super jealous. You're like, I spent all this money on my tree, uh, my CAD tree thing. You're like, yeah. I just make them. I usually, when I'm doing trees, I usually turn the smooth option on. Okay, there's, there's my second tree. Drag it, drop it into my brushes. Scatter brushes, and then same thing, random, random, random. Colorization method, tints and shades. And probably with these, you may want to space them out a little bit more. You know, if you've got palm trees, you usually don't put big clumps of palm trees together. Okay? We all good? We all got a safe environment? Oh, you 
turned into a tree. It that became a tree tree. So um, just go back to the Okay, there you go. Now get into the cell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good job everybody. We have saved the environment and now we're going to destroy it. We're going to make uh, a road. Why? <laughs> that would be like that would be my gift to the world, right? Like I taught them how to do trees, I didn't teach them how to do roads and so we just had this Eden, right? It was all beautiful in the end. Okay, we're going to talk about it. We're, so we've been using scatter brushes. You can use scatter brushes for people, for cars, for um, for everything. Let me uh, let me show you cars real quick. Cars are basically shaped like this. Um, they'll have some sort of color, typically that color, and they typically have a windshield like that and they typically have a rear windshield that's like that okay basic car or you could always go and grab an aerial view of a Porsche or something cool and put it in here and use the uh, make the uh, vectorize tool that we did last time with Sparky and uh, put your own cars in, but we'll just do a generic car like this. Um, three rectangles, that's what cars look like from the top. If you don't believe me, go on that bridge over down University and just look down on them. This is sort of what cars look like. I'm going to drag it into the um, brush palette. I'll make a scatter brush out of it. I'm just going to leave it like this for now. Cars behave differently than trees because cars go in straight lines. And then they turn corners, and then they go in straight lines. So it's just going to be changing the um, <coughs> changing the properties of these things. Here I put the cars there, but these cars are not doing what cars do. They're sort of in a wreck. So I'm going to double click on the scatter brush options, and I want the rotation to be relative to the path. Now you'll see that my cars are all not doing what cars do. So I'm going to change the rotation to 90 degrees up here. And now they're acting a little bit more like cars, except they're, this is like uh, Los Angeles all of the time. So we're going to change the spacing a little bit. And if you randomize the spacing, now they're starting to behave a little bit more like cars. Cars are typically all about the same size. Yeah? It's just one. I just made one line of cars. But I did turn my cars 90 degrees so that they would line up with their, the rotation is relative to the path now. And that's how, like, with the people, if you want them all standing in a queue, you have their rotation relative to the path. Okay, so here we have some cars. And we can color the cars using that tool. The size usually with cars, cars are all about the same size. So 
I guess that's not true. Um, for this option though, this is a all cars of the same size thing. And if you were going to scatter them, it would be just a tiny little deviation. You don't want the cars too um, scattered, like maybe 5%. And apply that to the strokes. And if I want to make the cars a little bit smaller. Okay, so now we've got like a row of cars turning a corner and there's a wreck happening right here. So, if you want to avoid the wreck, I would go back in and just make sure that when I'm doing the, the spacing, everything is above 100%. You get that? So, it's if, if everything was, if the spacing was 100, then they're bumping into each other. Like the back of one part of the brush will bump into the front of the other one. If I don't want these cars hitting each other, I just make sure that the random spacing, they're both above 100%, and then they won't whack into each other. Or like, you know how you're supposed to have two seconds of spacing between you and the car in front of you? If you're doing the freeway, you could take the spacing up so that you do that as well. Okay? There are the cars. Now the cars need something to drive on. So we're going to do a road. A road. Was there a question? How did they turn the corner? Um, oops. Under the brush tool, change the rotation relative to path. And when I brought my car in, it was it was going like the wrong way. It was turned, so I I tech, I made the rotation fixed, and I just turned it 90 degrees. So I could also have these cars all drive in the other direction. This is a rush hour on the way home. So we have on the way to work. And on the way home. They're going faster on the way home. And they're more packed together. <laughs> okay? Let's make the road. So we're going to go back to the rectangle tool. And I'm going to make a section of road. Just going to make sort of a rectangle. And I'm going to make it black with no outline. And now I've got, in order for people to know it's a road, I've got to put some stripes on it. So I'm going to go to the rectangle tool again. And I'm going to put a yellow stripe right there. Okay, I'm just doing a piece of the road. Once I've got black rectangle with the yellow stripe, um, I want to, so if, if I click on my uh, rectangle, it shows you where the midpoint is. And if you look at it carefully, my yellow line is not lined up exactly with the middle of my road. Um, I want them to line up. So I'm going to go to the Align tool. It's hiding under your Pathfinder box. Or go from Window, under Window, you go to the Align tool. Shift F7, for those of you memorizing the hotkeys, but the align tool is also one of the super great tools of, of Illustrator, where I can say I want these two shapes to align exactly, and that's right here with the horizontal align center. And when I click on that, even if I had, let's say that my yellow line was way over here, I click on it and do the horizontal align center, it lines the two of them up. Okay, now I'm going to grab both of them at the same time. I click out here in space, drag over both of them, and I'm going to drop it into my brushes palette. And this time I'm going to do a pattern brush. So we did a scatter brush before. Now we're going to do a pattern brush. Pattern brushes have different, um, have different uh, properties. And it gives you an example of what it's doing right here. 
Um, and the first thing that I noticed immediately is my um, I had my road turn the wrong way. It wants it turned uh, 90 degrees. So I'm going to cancel, take my road, and I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. If you hold the shift key down, then it turns exactly 45 or exactly 90. So I've turned my road sideways. That's how the brush wants them to come in. And now I'm going to drag it back into the brushes. Click Pattern Brush. Click OK. And now in the little preview right here, you see that it's looking like a road. And that's what I want it to look like. So I'm going to click I'm just going to be happy with this. This looks good. Click OK. And now using the pen tool, I'm going to draw a shape. I'll turn its fill off. And then I'll click on my road. And there it is. Maybe make my road a little smaller. All right, are you as happy as you were doing the trees, or are you happier building roads? What kind of planners are you guys? All right, let's. So we've now destroyed the environment. We've put roads through everywhere. Big roads, little roads, roads next to roads. Okay, and you can, if you want, you can do all the different variations on roads. If you want to do, um, if you want to do roads where you're allowed to turn, um, you're only allowed to pass on the one side. Drag that in there. Make a new uh, pattern brush. pattern brush, and now I've got a road. <laughs> okay, did everyone see that? So now I've got, you're only allowed to, um, yeah, you're only allowed to pass from one side. And then you just have all these brushes in your in your palette, and then once you've built them all, you, you can just real quickly, boom, 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 pop these things down in the Illustrator. Okay. Maybe we want to do um, Maybe we want to add a bike lane. We'll go back to helping the environment instead of hurting it. Drag it in, pattern brush, okay, got it. Then maybe we turn this into a road where you can't cross the median and you've got bike lane. You just so far ahead. Yeah, 
Yeah, the curves come from your drawing of whatever shape you make with your brush tool. You make uh, your curves from it. That as you're driving all over this beautiful uh, forest. Let's see, what came up on the road? Can you check this out? Oh, dude. Oh, This class just doubled in awesomeness. Okay, go to your cars, arrange and bring them to the front, and like line them up so that they fit on the road somehow. Dude, you know what? Disney's going to be calling you in a little bit. Yeah, keep your ringer on. Okay, I'm putting these cars on the road. Um, I'm... If you change the weight of the line, it makes them smaller. Okay, and then you double click on it. Make sure I did this right. And you were messing with the spacing. And you probably had the spacing fixed. Correct. Have sp fixed spacing. Click in this little box right here and push the up arrow. And there they are driving. And there they are driving home. Driving the other way. Oh man. Uh oh. And this is like if there's snow and that's a that's a sad story. We're not gonna do that. Okay, so here's what you do. You like asking your he's like, What's your skill level in Illustrator? And you're like, watch this. And you show cars moving in Illustrator. Like, I think Right, and you're like, watch this, and, like, we and then he's like, he's like, how many zeros do you want me to put at the end of your? Yeah. And then he gets tired, and he's like, I can't make a row. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the thing, I always figured it out because they couldn't do trees. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why it's so good to waste your time. <laughs> We'd have never come up with this otherwise. <laughs> or, or, wait, don't, don't. Okay, wait, I'm going to try one more thing, just because I'm, I'm like that. If we did it the other way, too. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line the other way. I'm going to put the cars on it. <laughs> we'll make these blue cars. Yeah. And then we do the cars. Look at this. He's going to add another zero to your your contract. Yeah, they're going over here too. Be sure you be sure you throw away this other one before you show them. Like delete this other one right there. But you can do, man, you could do them all over the place because as you edit it, yeah, right. Like who else can do this? Just make sure that it's below both of these guys. Uh, uh, arrange and send to back, and then it's genius. All right, don't spend too much time doing this, but that was fun. I don't think anyone uses Illustrator for animation. <laughs> But we figured out how to do it. That's why we spend time in college.
It's a quality education right there. Okay, roads, trees, um, people. What else would you put on your ground? Um, buildings. Buildings are just like Yeah, yeah. That's a good that's a good point here. I'll show you how to do it. We're gonna make Gilbert right now. Okay, you have to put on a stupid looking dormer. And then you have to do here. I'll show you how to do it. I won't do it stupid. So this is how I would do it. If, if you if you if you're trying to do a horrible subdivision, um, I would do one of the roofs. I would give it sort of a, a like one of them's darker than the other, right? So you've got like the sun is hitting one side and not the other, and then you've got your your stupid dormer is going to have the same thing. Uh, that's not how to do that. If you go work in the private sector for someone doing um, subdivisions, you can be like, oh yeah, watch, I can populate this entire thing in less than 60 seconds. So I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm going to hit O for the, um, the mirror tool. V, I can line them back up. And then make that an even darker color. Kind of like that. Yeah, that's about Gilbert. And then I'm going to drag it into here and make a scatter brush. And then, let's see, I'm going to and then move all this other stuff out of the way. Oops. <coughs> Rotation relative to path. <coughs> And we've got to space them out a little bit more. There we go. <laughs> yeah, right. And then you gotta have your road. Yeah, that's pretty much how it feels. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, Right, and then you would have a second one here. Right, there you go. Oh, grass. And we will uh, send that to the back. <laughs> look, everybody, it's Gilbert. <laughs> and then, but look, you could then you can do you grab everything, make your copy. Use your mirror tool. And then grab it again. Uh oh. This is what this is what uh, Pulte Homes does. Oh. 
Oh. Oh yeah, we should put some trees, I guess. One tree. <laughs> <laughs> and they're too they're too big, right? Like <laughs> Yeah. So we'll. Uh, you can like create a brush and circles and cactiles. Yeah, that represent the cactus. Yeah, see, they they made the second part of the subdivision later, and so the trees are smaller. Yeah, phase two. All right, now that I've given you all the hopelessness that I possibly can. <laughs> You know what? You could print this out and like make it really big, and everyone'd be like, "Oh, it's so true." Oh, <laughs> man, Columbia would just be all over that. It's Arizona happening. Yeah, that's how you actually get there. Okay, good collaboration today, class. Um, what are we working on? You still doing homework? What was I supposed to teach you today? <laughs> okay. Well, ah, do I have a vector? Okay, now that you know how to put trees and roads and cars, um, start doing that to your site. So we did it with Photoshop before we're bringing this up, and now I want to see it. It'll be a little more cartoony version of it, but I want you to sort of what you did in Photoshop to your site that you're working on. I want you to do the same thing, but using Illustrator instead. You know what I forgot on this was... Yes, that's right. See, so now it's all this to lakes. You can add bodies of water pretty easily. So I want you to be editing your site in Illustrator just so that I can see that you can do it. It may not be the ideal. You may want to use the realistic ones, but I want to show. I want you to show that you can do it. I'll call this Yes. The, the site that you've already edited in Photoshop, edit in Illustrator. It doesn't have to be the exact same thing if you're still working on what you're going to have there and your, your friends. Are we also creating the advertisement in um, Yes. You're recreating your advertisement in. Right. Because you're, that's due Monday. Your site isn't going to be due until the 24th. So finish up your advertisement in Illustrator for Monday. And then <coughs> we'll get working on your. Psychic. Unless you get super excited. If your site is in Gilbert, you already know how to do it. I have a lot of animosity towards Gilbert because all of my friends moved there and they didn't. And I'm like, darn it. I'm trying to make things better. Why don't you come make things better? And we did. We made things better. It's called Gilbert. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts a little bit like that. Like, why do you gotta live all ghetto like? Why don't you move to Gilbert with the rest of us? 
And it's because I have standards. Yes? Um, you just be, I think you can, it's up to you. You can either redo the whole site and Illustrator, or you can just be adding, uh, yeah, you can be adding people to your site, you can be adding roads to your site, you can be adding trees to your site. Just use Illustrator to do it instead of Photoshop. Are we redoing the ad that we already did? Either the one you already did, or a different one if you found one you like that. Yeah, the one that you did in Photoshop at the beginning, you can do that one, or you can do a different one. Yeah. Or a new one that you've seen. You just be creating an ad in Illustrator instead of Photoshop. Like how you did Sparky? Yeah, you're just doing that. Like what you did at first in Photoshop where you made the ad in Photoshop, you're just doing that in Illustrator. Just to show that you're competent. And then your boss is like, what level of competence are you in Illustrator? And like, well. Yeah. And you're like, which one of these did I do? Thank you. You're welcome. Good job, everybody. We came up with something new with the animated cars. Yeah. Uh, a while ago, I got asked for that you could use illustrations on my portfolio, but I have been started to do it. And up until this point, I had no experience in editing and doing like your quadrants or breaking the course. Okay. Um, yeah, InDesign is the best program for it. Which we start learning. When are we going to do that? The 24th of this month. So you'll start learning that a little bit. InDesign and Illustrator are really close to the same program. Illustrator is like one page versions, and InDesign is like multi page versions. I've worked a little bit with a lot of this just because that work is one that I have a design for later. Oh, okay. <laughs> my program was the throwaway program for non-studio people in the design school, and they're just finally building it. They're finally doing something. Yeah. So. Um, but I did, until I learned InDesign, I did all of my portfolios in Illustrator. Because okay. I did cartoons always that I did, like, Word. Oh, you build it in Word. I don't need InDesign. I can build just as fine. Well, you you can proving me wrong. You can in Word. Um, my kids, there's these new online ones that work kind of like Illustrator that my kids do all sorts of stuff with. Um, let's see if I've got a portfolio I can show you. Yeah, I mean, I do, you know, I'm just laying them all out. This is an InDesign, but you can do all this in Illustrator. You just bring in photos in and manipulate them. And then, you know, build plans and do it. Put uh, text on there. Yeah, that's the, that's the other thing this class is supposed to do, right? Yeah. Oh, you are right now. You're just now getting your stuff together. Yeah. Um, well, that's good. Yeah. Show, just pop up that. Show them the animated I cars. I wouldn't care. How could you care? What are you going to do? Just the planner for the next one? The interview, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's already true. I don't have a Paradise Valley house right now. So you can't help me there. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, I mean, you can. We haven't shown this, but in Illustrator, you can just take, uh, you just drag and drop photos in there. And then they're easy to manipulate size. Just hold down the shift key when you move them around, otherwise they distort. they distort. Yeah. And then 
and you can bring in, you have text that goes along with it. Just kind of a text box. And use the text tool and then uh, sometimes it's helpful to, you know, if you have two different pictures, the align tool that I showed today, you can have, you know, you want the lines to be really lined up. So you, you align, you know, you get your sides really, really square. I think that's useful. But without, I mean, it's sort of all the tools that you're already using. You can just use them for images as well. People like big images. Fill up the page. Uh, yeah, and then for yeah, InDesign we'll get to what a week from Monday, I think. Yeah. How many folks with other InDesign and raising up their cloud to help a lot of like experience and something just like it? Yeah, it's really similar to Illustrator. So even if I mean if you opened it up and like can you just mess around with InDesign for an hour, you could probably be able to go. Yeah. Yeah, we did it. Design guidelines for that whole grand development. This is all in InDesign. See, it's just you know images here, text here. You kind of put this big logo back behind. Is this, probably, is this something similar to what you what you're doing? And we had a few times that we had to, you know, I had to create this whole thing out of the Uh-huh. Having to learn that for like a couple of months. Yeah, Esri stuff. I, I learned some of it in school. I, I don't know it very well. Yeah, I'll but it, it makes sense. It's just the, I might have to start learning uh, grouping and making this with the No, you'll be dangerous once yeah. you're not. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. I but this, I mean, copy your ad, right? Like, see an ad that you like, and you're like, oh, I'm going to use those sorts of layouts, and here's how I'm going to lay out my thing. That's yeah. that's what I, you know, that's what I always recommend. If someone spent millions of dollars figuring out what's attractive in an ad, just copy that. It's going to sure. work the same on your people as well. Okay. Have a good day. Good luck. <laughs>